If you'd all like to open up with me to your Bibles, today we'll be, um, tonight we'll be reading out of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Our main verse that we will focus on tonight will be Philippians 4.4, 4, which... Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Rejoicing can be described as a feeling or showing of great joy or delight, a celebrating of your joy. And Paul tells the church here in Philippi that we should always be rejoicing. He also gives us various examples in the chapter as to why we should rejoice. So we'll, our first example will be in verses 2 and 3. I employ Eodia and I employ Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companions, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. If we are Christians and we put forth hard labor, try our best, we can rejoice because we have the knowledge that our name is in the book of life and that should be all of our goals is for our name to be there. Our next example here is in verse 5 where he says, let your gentleness be known to all men, the Lord is at hand. We do not know when Christ will return, but we do know that he is always here with us, and he sees our actions and everything we do, and that should influence us to, it should bring out the best of us, and we should show that and have an impact on other people. Next, we'll move down to verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We should be extremely thankful that God has given us the way of prayer in which we can talk to him, communicate with him, and address our problems and our concerns to him. And he will give us our uh, information, what we are looking for through his word, which is the Bible. Um... He, in a way, talks through us through his word, which we should follow. Next will be peace. And we see this in verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We have a relationship with God through Christ. Being a Christian provides us with peace, and we shouldn't concern ourselves on worldly affairs. We should set our minds to concern with um, spiritual and where we want to be in the end. God tells us here that if we are in Christ Jesus that he will focus on our worldly things. He will take care of us as long as we focus on doing his word and what he tells us. In verse 8 he talks about, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He's telling us here as children of the Lord, we need to meditate on things which are positive. Um, we shouldn't concern ourselves with the bad. Um, we should have um, anything that is true, noble, authentic, compelling, or gracious. Those are just some of the examples of what we should always have in our mind. Our next verse is um, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If we are a Christian and we follow the faith, Christ will give us strength, whether it be through the congregation, through your family, he will aid us in our problems. And our last verse is um, verse 19. 
And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We have, if we are in Christ, we have spiritual riches, which he has put forth for us. Um, all of our riches are given to us through Christ and his blood. And we have, one of them could, is the knowledge that he gives us, knowing that we will one day be up in heaven with him. So why should we rejoice? Well, there are seven main reasons listed here in the chapter. Our names are in the book of life. Jesus is always near. We have the alley of prayer. We have peace within our hearts. We should always have our thought and mindset on things which are good and positive. We have strength which is given to us through Christ. And we have spiritual riches. T tonight, if... Wouldn't it be something to be able to say that our names are in the book of life? It should be everyone's goal to eventually have our name in the book of life. And that is truly something we should rejoice because we are, other people are not as fortunate as we are. So, well, before you can become a Christian, you need to... First, you need to hear the word of God, Romans 10, 17. You need to believe, Hebrews 11, verse 6. You need to repent of your sins, Acts 2, 38. You need to confess, Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 through 33. You must be baptized, totally immersed in water for the remission of your sins. You find another example of that in Mark 16, 16. And it doesn't just stop there. After our baptism, we are added unto the church, but in order to stay there, we have to live a Christian life and follow what God has told us to do in the Bible. So perhaps you're not a Christian tonight, and you would like your name in that book of life. Well, there is a way. You have to come to the front of the auditorium and confess your sins, repent, and be baptized. Or maybe you are a Christian who has fallen away or having a difficult time right now and you need prayers from the congregation. We invite you to come all together as we stand and sing.